and get go ahead and get started. Good afternoon. I'm Trudy Murata, a volunteer community ambassador with AARP Virginia, and I want to welcome you to our six pillars of brain health webinar today, and thank you for joining us. This program is scheduled for 60 minutes, although we could finish a bit early. Then again, sometimes we run a few minutes over too. Experts tell us regardless of our age, we can reduce the chance of age-related diseases and optimize our chance of maintaining cognitive health. Throughout the lifespan, our brain is constantly changing and can make new nerve cells. The best part is that we can do a lot to take charge of our brain health and improve our quality of life. So we applaud you for deciding to spend time with us today to learn about and share lifestyle behaviors that support brain health. In the reminder for today's email, or in the reminder in today's email uh, for this program, we included a link to download the slide presentation and a link to the resource page listing all the websites that we'll share this morning. I'm thrilled to be joined today by Dr. Rebecca Daly. Like me, Rebecca is also an AARP Virginia Volunteer Community Ambassador, and we're very fortunate to have her on our team. Rebecca is a patient safety consultant for the Inova Health System, where she coaches and empowers teams to achieve zero harm and promote psychological safety. Rebecca attended the University of Kentucky for both her undergraduate Bachelor of Science in Nursing degree and her Doctor of Nursing practice in Population and Organizational Systems Leadership. She is a fearless advocate. She has a passion for helping others see their potential, lessening healthcare disparities in her community and promoting healthy lifestyles for all. When she isn't riding her Peloton bike or in the gym, Rebecca loves to travel and learn about different cultures. Rebecca voluntarily conducts brain health webinars on behalf of AARP, and her role here today is to provide general guidance, not specific medical advice or recommendations. Hopefully, the information we cover and the resources we share will help you make informed decisions to take charge of your brain health. So with that, I will turn the program over to Rebecca. Rebecca, it's all yours. Thank you so much, Trudy, and welcome everyone. Again, my name is Rebecca Daly and I'm a volunteer with AARP, and I look forward to facilitating today's conversation on brain health. So let's jump right into it. I wanted to start with a disclaimer that again, this session is intended to be informational and educational and does not constitute medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. You should always seek the advice of a physician or other qualified healthcare provider regarding your personal health and before beginning or changing any treatment, activity, program, or dietary plan. AARP is not responsible for any decisions or actions taken in reliance upon or as a result of the information provided during this event. I am a nurse, but I am not a medical expert in neurosurgery or brain surgeon, and I cannot provide specific advice or recommendations for each of you. The information we covered today is intended to help people make informed decisions on how to lead a lifestyle that supports brain health. So let's get started. I wanted to start off today with some good news. Until recently, the prevailing scientific wisdom held that the human brain was pretty much fixed early in life. Experts believe that at birth, our brains had all the cells that we were ever going to have. Again, not a neuroscience, so I'm not going to go into the structure of the brain or how it operates, but what I share with you today is based on research. And the good news is that regardless of age, our brain is constantly changing and can make new nerve cells. The best part is that we can do a lot to take charge of our brain health and improve our quality of life. Experts say that only about 30% of physical aging can be traced to our genes and the rest, well, it's up to us. 
So today's presentation is again based on current brain research vetted for you by AARP's Global Council on Brain Health and our work for AARP's online Stain Sharp program. We've identified six pillars of a lifestyle that supports your brain health, and they are one, engage your brain or learn new things, two, stay socially engaged or be social. Three, manage your stress, and that's address the mental and physical effects of stress. Four, exercise or be physically active. Five, get restorative sleep, and that's sleep better to enjoy the restorative benefits. And six, eat right. Healthy food choices can contribute and support your brain health. There are significant trends today that make it particularly important to live a lifestyle that supports brain health. As people are living longer, the risk of cognitive decline increases. And so we want to be in good health to enjoy these extra years and the experiences we find in them. Also, it's important for brain health, it's rethinking retirement, this trend, it's really increasing and redefining the whole nation, the notion of traditional retirement. Many people will decide to continue their careers or start new ones, either because they want to or because they must for economic reasons. Another reason this is important is because of skyrocketing healthcare costs. Since we are living longer, the prospect of skyrocketing healthcare costs gives us additional incentive to live as healthy as we can for as long as we can. And finally, current brain research shows that a brain healthy lifestyle can optimize our chance of maintaining cognitive health. So let's jump into our first pillar, which is engage your brain. But you don't have to earn a degree to get the benefits of discovering and learning new things. Studies have shown the positive effects of challenging the brain in new ways throughout life. Our brain is stimulated and makes new connections when we learn new things or pursue new interest. So what do we wanna do? We wanna stay curious and give yourself a good mental workout by doing something that challenges your thinking, offers you enjoyment, and encourages you to grapple with new and complex ideas. So we wanna hear from you. What are some ways that you are learning new things and support your brain health? I've got two volunteers, Trudy and Joyce today, that'll be helping me through this. Um, but as many of you did when you joined the webinar, type your feedback into the chat option, not the Q&A. You can just use the chat and I'll have them um, help read some of them off. So again, what are some ways that you are learning new things to support your brain health? Okay. Uh, they are taking online classes. They're doing Wordle. <laughs> That's something new and different that I just started doing. Uh, the ukulele. Oh. Someone is still working, so they're doing uh, remote work from Wordscape is also something else. Let's see. You all are typing too fast. I can't read that fast. <laughs> Attending webinars like this. That's a great idea. Learning new languages, lots of Zoom classes, virtual lectures. Let's see if I got them on. Crossword puzzles, travel, and taking different routes to get to different locations. Nice. Online cooking classes. Oh, there's one I've not seen before. Sculpture. Very interesting. Very good. Thank you for sharing. Yes, thank you. Those are great ideas. Um, and some of them are ones that we have printed here. So let's go over a few extras for those um, that may be interested in new ways to challenge yourself. So again, as we said, teaching or taking a class, learning a new language or dance, playing a musical instrument, like I said, somebody in the chat was playing the ukulele, I believe. Um, I think that one's a little hard, but I, I would love to join that. Doing complex arts and crafts, reading a challenging book or exploring a topic that is novel, playing a challenging card game or board game, or writing letters. 
And again, those are just a few ways um, for different activities that you can help challenge yourself. So we're gonna jump into pillar number two, be social and stay socially engaged. Studies show that people who have good social networks live longer and are physically and mentally healthier than people who are socially isolated. Connecting with other people is stimulating and challenging and often adds meaning and purpose to our lives. In fact, experts say social connectedness is a key predictor of health and independence in later years. So we want you to stay engaged with friends, family, and community. In 2020, a study called Loneliness and Social Isolation Linked to Serious Health Conditions by the National Academies of Science, Engineering, and Medicine found that there are health risks associated with loneliness. A quite serious one is that social isolation was associated with about a 50% increased risk of dementia. So again, we wanna hear from you. We understand these are unprecedented times and it's been a little bit of a challenge to remain social, but what are some ways you're staying socially engaged? Here we have uh, someone that's taking um, Bible studies, Zooming with friends, happy hour with neighbors, sounds like fun, walking with friends, volunteer work attending meetings uh, like a book club, keeping a network of friends very close, going to the theater, hiking with friends, Twitter and Facebook, card games, walking puppies. Uh, so here's someone who teaches an exercise, a water exercise class, aerobics maybe. Mm -hmm. um, an Uber driver, my goodness, a quilting group. Goodness, here we go fast again. <laughs> Taking three Zoom, Zumba classes, walking with neighbors, water aerobics again, volunteering, all good responses. Going to the park with grandkids, a writing circle. Great, great ideas. Yes, those are great. Thank you so much, Joyce, for reading those off for me. So again, a few more ideas that we may not have mentioned organizing regular virtual game nights or book clubs, attending virtual community events, consider adopting a pet or pet sitting for family and friends. Those furry ones, our loved ones, keep, bring us lots of excitement. Volunteering is another great way to stay connected. There are even opportunities available to do so remotely. So with AARP, you can help stay connected with free resources that may be of interest for you to explore. To find volunteer resources, check out AARP's Create the Good or CTG site. You can even, even explore opportunities you can do from home by visiting aarp.org forward slash virtual volunteering. The main homepage for CTG can be found at aarp.org forward slash CTG as well. Another way to stay connected is to check out the AARP Virtual Community Center, where you can explore a wide ranging variety of online interactive events and classes and overall fun. Visit AARP's Virtual Community Center at aarp.org forward slash V as in Victor, CC. And finally, if you or someone you love is feeling isolated or anxious in these challenging times, Hearing a friendly voice on the phone may help. You can request a call from AARP's Friendly Voices program by dialing AARP at 1-888-281-0145 for English or 1-888-497-4108 for Spanish. And that's between nine and five local. And these links can be found in the DIY kit handout. Alrighty, so to jump into our third pillar, which is managing stress. Managing stress includes regular exercise, which relieves the mental and physical effects of stress. Smiling and laughing, those also release hormones and brain chemicals to balance the effects of stress. Distracting yourself with music or reading can shift you away from repetitively going over the same issues or problems. 
as well as seeking out green spaces. Spend time outdoors if possible to regularly appreciate and enjoy nature. Sometimes I enjoy just going outside to smell of fresh air. It's different than just being in your home all the time. So again, I wanna engage with each of you. What do you do to help manage your stress? I dance like nobody's watching. Oh, yes. <laughs> and I live alone, so nobody is watching. Okay. Meditation and music, cat videos, yoga, <laughs> sing, beach walks, deep breathing and exercise, funny movies, gardening. Oh, yeah. We got to get the dog videos in there, too. Sorry. <laughs> Ride my bike. Walking, journaling, gratitude journals are always great. Reading and walking the dog. All right, I'll put one more in for you, Rebecca. Happy hour. Oh, yes. <laughs> All great suggestions. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. I think we've heard uh, multiple times those cat and dog videos. They are the funniest um, and just bring you joy to kind of watch and kind of relax. And again, that distracts you from a lot of things you have going on. Again, here are a few more. Confide in friends. Be silent and still. That helps quiet the mind. It's a skill that can be learned through meditation. As simple as sitting quietly and counting your breaths. There are certain apps you can download as well that kind of walk you through guided meditations or things that help you um, take some deep breaths. And as you can see, we have that at the bottom as well. Take deep breaths. Deep breathing when practiced regularly can be calming and the extra dose, dose of oxygen is good for the brain. Also, Tai Chi, an ancient slow moving exercise and yoga techniques. And take stretch breaks, limit screen time, give your mind regular moments of rest. That's especially important for those of us that are still working, um, ensuring that whether you're home or you're in the office, that you have regular time set up, um, set an alarm that says every hour I'm gonna stand up and stretch. Um, next to my um, desk, I just have a picture of a few stretches to do even from my chair, where just turning your head to the side and you know pulling your shoulders back, things like that will certainly help. Jump it into pull pillar number four, ongoing exercise. And again, this doesn't mean you have to be a marathon runner. You just need to move more. Experts recommend you get at least 150 minutes of exercise each week. That's not per day, that's each week. Move about 30 minutes on most days. Walking is a good start, but it doesn't have to be an all endurance exercise. Build strength training, flexibility and balance into your program. Beyond the physical, exercise has many benefits. It is good for your brain, your heart, and it reduces stress. Research suggests that being physically active helps repair and protect chemicals in the brain, increase your circulation, reduce anxiety, and improve your sleep, and reduce the risk of diabetes, heart disease, depression, and stroke. So find activities you enjoy. Again, it's also important to remember to talk to a healthcare provider before you start a new exercise program. Let's hear from you again. What are some ways that you are moving and getting exercise? I've noticed that a lot of these are uh, uh, things that people are doing fit multiple pillars. So that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, babysitting grandchildren. I promise you that's good exercise. <laughs> Walking, yoga, dancing. Silver sneakers. Good program. Mm -hmm. Aquatic. Uh, Aquatics, um, yoga, swimming, gardening, the treadmill, volunteering at the farm. Yeah. Choose a town and explore every park. How about that? Mm -hmm. Work out to fabulous 50s. Sounds like my kind of workout. Mm -hmm. Cleaning ministry at church, good exercise. Online videos, Aquafit. All these good, Rebecca. Thanks, Joyce. All righty, those are some great ideas. Thank you for sharing. Again, just a few more. 
taking regular walks. Again, you can put some of these pillars together as Joyce was saying, when you go walking and listen to a guided meditation so you can get your exercise and help reduce some of your stress at the same time. Build endurance with the moderate intensity aerobic exercises like dancing, running, or biking. Um, and also getting into strength training two or more days a week to tone and strengthen your muscles. And you do not have to go to the gym for that. Um, as you can see, we have someone in our picture here who does have some weights, um, looks like they're in the kitchen. But if you're in the kitchen and you do not have weights, I know during um, the initial uptick in the pandemic, it was impossible to find workout equipment anywhere on Amazon. Everybody bought it up. Uh, but use some canned goods. Use two things of canned goods. Um, if you have some half gallon of milk or if you've progressed in your training to where you have a gallon of milk, you can use that as well. Use different things around the house to help you. Work on balance, flexibility, and strength with Tai Chi or yoga. Again, those are things you can do around the house um, using pillows instead of yoga blocks or using a hand towel to help you stretch, You know, putting that on your foot and helping you get that range of motion for some of those hard to reach areas. There are certainly things we can do at home that can assist us with getting more active. Moving on to our fifth pillar, which is restorative sleep. Sleep restores the brain. It is vital to support your brain health, including cognitive function. It is essential to overall mental and physical health. Some things you can do for a good night's sleep include avoiding caffeine beginning after lunch, and if you have not yet stopped smoking, avoid any smoking and nicotine substances four to six hours before bed. So let's hear from you. What do you do to sleep better at night? While we're waiting for our guests to chime in, I, I discovered by accident when the power went off during a snowstorm here in Virginia, it was off overnight, I sleep better when the room is cooler. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, some of our guests read, turn off all media, no caffeine, use a humidifier. Lots of people agree with me about a cooler bedroom. Yes. <laughs> Protein snacks, breathing techniques, meditate. White noise, that's an excellent suggestion. All very good suggestions. Let's go back to you, Rebecca. Thanks so much, Trudy. I can um, agree with you too. I like my room to be nice and cool. Um, so let's take a, a deeper look into sleep and what supports restorative sleep. So we wanna start by getting enough sleep. Adults typically need seven to eight hours of sleep in a 24 hour period. We also wanna practice good sleep techniques. People at any age can change their behavior in ways that may improve their sleep. Recommendations include maintaining a regular sleep-wake schedule, get up at the same time every day, seven days a week. I know that one's a hard for me because on Saturday and Sunday, that 7 a.m. alarm is not my friend. <laughs> Listen to your body. Go to bed earlier and adopt an earlier sleep schedule. Expose yourself to light during the daytime and reduce exposure to light prior to sleep. Again, avoiding TV and other electronics in the bedroom. There are changes to sleep as people age. A person who is 50 should not expect to sleep like they did at age 25. You may have to put more effort to get the restorative benefits of sleep. Sleep is more easily interrupted as you age. Deep sleep decreases between the ages of 30 to 60 years old. The body's internal clock shifts as well. Older people tend to get sleepier early in the evening and staying up late becomes more difficult. They also start to awaken earlier in the morning. For example, you may get sleepy around eight or 9 p.m., go to sleep. You actually sleep your seven to eight hours and wake up between four and 5 a.m. These changes are a normal part of aging and don't mean that person's sleep quality is worse or that the person necessarily has insomnia or another sleep disorder. It just means that the timing of your sleep has shifted. Don't worry too much about an occasional bad night of sleep. We all have them. But consult with your healthcare provider if your life is being negatively impacted by chronic lack of sleep. 
In case we miss anything from hearing from our audience, here are a few other things you can do to help you get better sleep and its restorative benefits. As mentioned earlier, adjusting your caffeine intake beginning after lunch. Keep pets that disturb sleep out of the bedroom. Again, we love our furry friends, but they can toss and turn and wake us up in the middle of the night. Restrict fluids and food three hours before going to bed. Keep your room cool, as Trudy mentioned. And keep smartphones, TV, and electronics out of the bedroom to reduce light exposure prior to sleep. Many of the new smartphones we have on the market have sleep settings that say 10 o'clock every night, that's mine, it turns off all notifications except for my ICE, my emergency people. So my mom, my sister. So other than that, I have no Facebook notifications or Instagram after 10 p.m. unless I physically go look at them. But those are ways to kind of help set your sleep routine into practice. Now, our sixth pillar is eating right. When you eat, also, what you eat also has a big impact on your brain. Although no specific diet has been proven to maintain or improve brain health, studies have found that certain eating plans help cognition. Examples of healthy eating plans include the Mediterranean diet, the DASH diet, which stands for Dietary Approaches to Stop Hypertension, the MIND diet, which is actually a hybrid of the two. So it's MIND, stands for Mediterranean DASH Intervention for Neurodegenerative Delay. Evidence supports for better brain health, eating less meat and fewer sweets, and that will be consuming more fish, nuts, beans, grains, leafy green vegetables, and healthy fats, such as olive oil. In general, the field of diet and brain health is relatively new. Gaps still exist in our knowledge of the effects of nutrients on brain health, and more research is needed. So again, let's hear from you. What are some foods that you eat as part of a brain healthy diet? We have people who love fresh fruits and veggies, um, low carb, low carb diet with fruits and vegetables uh, and meats, nuts, greens, fish and nuts, salmon, walnuts, blueberries, high in antioxidants, sardines, love them, love them, love them, salmon, vegetable smoothies, coconut oil, herbal teas and decaf coffee, fish at least twice a week. Someone's trying to become 80% vegan and 20% non-vegan, but with fish only, interesting. Here's one who has protein, uh, eats protein, uh, but eats lots of candy lately. Oops, wouldn't it be great if we had protein infused candy? Puddings, protein powder, gluten-free foods. Some diets require that. Fresh green smoothies, no nuts, no sugar, or with nuts, I'm sorry, no sugar added. Sugar control, anything Neil grows. Interesting. Very, very good. Okay. Back to you. Awesome. Thank you. I think some of you guys have a cheat sheet because you really named a lot of um, the foods that we're going to recommend. So again, we want you to have eat more fish like salmon and sardines. Don't forget your nuts like walnuts and almonds. Serve your plate with vegetables like kale, spinach, and broccoli. Eating whole berries, somebody mentioned blueberries, and they can be fresh, frozen, or canned. And using vinegar, lemon, herbs, and spices for flavor instead of too much salt or sugar. That's very important. I know a lot of times we'll say, yes, we're eating healthy, we're eating our chicken and our veggies, and then you look over and someone pours salt all over it. It almost halfway negates it, but baby steps, we will get there. So our talk today would not be complete without listing some of the risks or threats to brain health. So let's look into those. One of the first risks we're gonna talk about is smoking. Smoking increases the risk of heart attack and stroke. Secondly, depression. Depression doubles the risk for cognitive decline. Depression is not 
again, is not a normal part of aging. Seek treatment if you have symptoms. Certain medications can also um, be a risk, including antihistamines, sleep aids, and some antidepressants. They've been shown to increase the risk of dementia. Tell your healthcare provider about the medications you're taking, including over-the-counter products, to rule out potential problems. Diabetes. Diabetes damages blood vessels throughout your body, including your brain. It is also increases your risk of heart disease, memory problems, and Alzheimer's disease. Hearing and vision loss is also linked to trouble with thinking and memory. Think of your eyes and ears as sensory extensions of your brain. See a healthcare provider if you're experiencing hearing loss or vision impairment. And lastly, heart disease. It increases risk of heart attack and strokes. So it is normal for your memory to not be as good as you age, but you can do things to help improve your memory. So a few tips for improving your memory are to establish a routine. Put everyday items in the same place so they're easier to find. I do this. I hang my keys in the same place every day. And when I do not, I cannot find them for the life of me. But put your keys in the same place every day. Put your glasses in the same spot, et cetera. Also, pay attention. Pay attention to the information you want to remember. It sounds like common sense, but concentration is key. Practice self-talk to maintain focus. Say, I'm going to check the, giant, the dryer repeatedly while you walk toward the laundry room. Then you won't get distracted by the lint on the carpet and instead go to the closet to get out the vacuum. You might let her think that you forgot about the clothes in the dryer, but you just lost focus. Use that positive self-talk. Avoid multitasking. It is far better to focus on one thing at a time. Use self-talk again. Write down your list of things to do and check it off and stick to it. Another tip is to take a break. Tension and stress are associated with memory lapses. Managing stress can help improve your memory. And lastly, use calendars, reminders, and alarms. The mind is for having ideas, not holding them. Clear the mind. Use calendars, reminders, and alarms to assist you. So what would a day filled with brain healthy behaviors look like for you? We wanna use this time to get a few of your ideas as well. So if there's anything that you learned today or things that you already do, what are you doing for upon waking up in the morning? What do you do for lunch? What would you eat to support your brain health? in the early afternoon, late afternoon, et cetera. Share some of your ideas in the chat with us. And we have someone who stretches in the morning mm -hmm. and throughout the day, drinking more water, always good to stay hydrated, mm -hmm. stretch breaks during the course of the day, eating healthy, sun breaks. That's interesting. I hadn't thought about it in that term, but that's a great idea. Yeah. Fruit and cereal in the morning. Mall walking during winter months. All great ideas. Certainly. Thank you so much for sharing. So again, as we think about many of these pillars, as I said, there are baby steps. And we've shared a lot of information for you. So we're gonna think about what, what can you do? What can you do today in just you know the morning, the evening, just incorporating a little bit at a time. I would say one thing that I've started this year is attempting to meditate. Um, I, I'm a very busy person and I'm in a thousand things at once. And when I lay down or even when I go to the spa, I'm thinking of my 10 list in my head of things that I need to do. So I've committed to meditating every night with guided meditation, that is, because again, I'm not at a place where I can do it on my own, but every night I start my app and it just walks me to, walks me through some deep breathing exercises or, you know, some reflection as I lay down and it really helps me get ready for my sleep as well. Again, those pillars all combine into one. So in conclusion, again, aging studies consistently point to a few fundamental qualities of a brain healthy lifestyle. 
The overall message is to stay active mentally, physically, and socially with special attention to a healthy diet, good sleep, and stress reduction. Start with small steps, steps and try to do something every day. Write down what you will do and when. So thank you for joining us today. I encourage you to consider incorporating the six pillars into your daily life. I wanna be sure to mention these resources to continue your learning on this topic. These links are also on your handout. So first we have the AARP Brain Health. You can find the latest news on brain health. Also Staying Sharp. Staying Sharp included with AARP membership is an online brain health program that focuses in on the six pillars and includes brain health challenges, articles, activities, recipes, videos, fun, games, and more. Plus, for an additional one-time fee, you can take a brain health assessment and receive personalized recommendations. For more information, go to stainsharp.aarp.org. The Global Council on Brain Health, which is the GCBH, as I mentioned at the beginning of our presentation, is a collaborative from AARP. The GCBH inspires thought leaders to work together to translate critical scientific information on brain health into simple actions people can take every day. The GCBH is dedicated to improving people's understanding of the steps they can take to improve their brain health throughout their lives. Brain health is vital to well being across the lifespan, so the GCBH's work aims to have a major impact. Also, there's a book called Keep Sharp. Build a Better Brain at Any Age by neurosurgeon and CNN chief medical correspondent Sanjay Gupta. Keep Sharp is an AARP supported book based in part on the work of the Global Council on Brain Health, which offers science driven guidance for brain health. Keep Sharp also offers guidance on brain diseases. It is available from aarp.org forward slash keep smart and wherever books are sold. There are also many other helpful resources list listed on your handout, so I encourage you to take a look at them. If you register for this program through AARP using your email address and you opted to receive email from AARP, AARP will send you a research questionnaire in about two weeks, which will ask about your experiences since you attended this presentation. Please be on the lookout for an email from AARP containing a link to the survey. Again, this will be in about two weeks. The subject line will begin with today's date and read January 7th, 2022, AARP Brain Health Workshop, Short Research Survey. Completing the research questionnaire is volunteer, voluntary and confidential. And AARP would greatly appreciate if you filled it out. This will help us know the effectiveness of this program. Please note that we welcome your feedback on our session today and we appreciate you taking a few moments to complete a participant survey as well. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. In review, we went over the six pillars of brain health, which are engage your brain, be social, manage stress, ongoing exercise, restorative sleep, and eat right. We went over brain health risk. We did tips for improving memory and what you can do today, and also some resources. We have included our contact information here. Please reach out to us with any questions or comments. Um, you can see our email um, as well as our social media platforms. And thank you for joining us. Back over to you, Trudy. Very good. Thank you, Rebecca. Just as a reminder, in the reminder for today's program, there was a link to all of the resources that we shared today and the slideshow and you will get a follow-up email that has a recording of this presentation for you to re-review or forward to friends and family. On behalf of AARP Virginia, I'd like to thank you for joining us this afternoon and express our gratitude to Rebecca Daly for sharing her valuable time and expertise with us this afternoon. We'd love to get your feedback on our program so in the chat box, you will see a link to the survey. Please click on the link and take a few moments to share your feedback with us. We will also send this link in the follow-up email. If you enjoyed today's program, 
please check out our upcoming events at aarp.org slash virtual VA. You can also have AARP present this program and other topics for your community group by contacting our speaker bureau at aarpva at aarp.org. Both of these um, websites are in the chat box for you to review as well. Until next time, we encourage you to stay active and lead a brain healthy lifestyle. And thank you again for your participation and for joining us today. We've had fun presenting this to you. It looks like you all have enjoyed the presentation as well. Thank you again to Rebecca. Have a great day on behalf of AARP Virginia. It's been great working with you today. Thanks.